UFC 207, you, you, uh, I have to do my predictions next week on the big round breakdown. But you, you, any predictions? You want to just do the main card? Yeah, are you talking about next weekend? Yes. The one, so it's Ronda Friday. Rousey. And so you got, uh, we can bring it up for you. Bring so, it up. So we'll, we'll start with Dillashaw Let's Lineker. Okay. I'm not going to give my opinions. I just want to hear yours. I got to say mine for next week, but All I want right. to get your take on this because you're obviously a wizard of the game. I, I'm going to go with Dillashaw, man. I think his, his ability to move and, and land the com- the combos is going to outtake John Lineker. But I got to say, man, you know what? They were saying, could John Lineker land on John Dotson, who's a freaking who, the fastest well, guy? Yes. Yeah, who's a, the fastest guy and most athletic guy in the division. And he landed on him, man, and he kept up with him. But I got to go with Dillashaw. He's got that experience level, man, and he's got a more diverse striking game. Um, the, the kicks and the combinations that they're doing at, uh, at, uh, with Dwayne has is, is been paying off. So I'm going to go with him on this one. I agree. You know, John's a, a uh, you know, this is a weird comparison. Obviously, John Lineker is way more uh, talented and experienced. But mm-hmm. John Lineker reminds me of kind of Mike Perry, this small, with more talent. Because he just, we know what he's going to do. He's the Terminator. He has hands of stone, and he's just going to march forward no matter what you do. That's yeah, absolutely you, right. How easy absolutely is that right. to game plan for? And I'm not saying he's easy to beat. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying if you come with the right game plan, it's way easier to do than, say, you're fighting a guy like TJ Dillashaw or Dominic Cruz who you're like, what the fuck? I wouldn't like, be I can't surprised get a beat. if they try to implement the same game plan as me because Correct. after my fight, uh, DwayneBain.com, uh, whatever, they reposted my highlight reel and gave me some praise on it, which is awesome of them. And it's probably because they're studying the same stuff. They're like, keep the distance, keep the footwork, keep them at bay. The pick kicks, the shots. you're missing, messing And so they saw me do it, and they were like, that's exactly what we're going to do next week. Don't get your back. Whenever your back touched the cage, I'm like, Alan, get the fuck get the, exactly. out, son. Because he's just like, yes. It's almost yeah. like a heat-seeking missile. It's going, do, 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 yeah. do, do, As soon as you hit that, boom. And But you're out. You're yeah. out. I agree. That, similar game plan. Uh, all right. And then you got Verdun Ooh, versus Kane. man. Shit. I mean. It's a doozy, right? That's a doozy. Because uh... remember. Uh, last time they fought, it was in Mexico City. Uh, Kane said he, he didn't get used to the altitude. Verdum yeah. obviously beat the brakes off of him. He did. And and Verdum showed me. It's crazy. Like, he showed such a chin in that fight, but then he got knocked out pretty badly. Stipe. And the next, uh, yeah, Stipe put him to sleep. With that, man, I'm going to go with Kane, bro. He's just such a bad man, and they're not fighting at altitude this time. Um, hopefully, he is healthy. That's the only thing, man. I feel like I Kane is Kane. always nursing some kind of bad injury. Um, he should be such a smarter fighter being a former champion, but I'm going to go with Kane on this one. Man. I, I feel like Fabricio hasn't looked um, like the Fabricio. We used to see him when he fought Kane, when he fought Mark Hunt. I don't know what's going on there. The thing that scares me is Kane uh, with the Fighters Association uh, – Said, uh, you know, I, I do need a, I think he said a neck surgery or a back surgery. Oh, he, goes, he mentioned that. He goes, but I it. want this fight so bad, I'm going to wait to do it after. I'm like, well, that's Oh, good. shit. Okay. Well, so, now we know. Yeah. We'll see. With that said, I'm still going to go with it because I agree. I don't think Fabricio has looked as strong and athletic uh, or just, just the beast that he was. Um, the, like you said, the, the chin going is a little scary for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and people Kane forget always, how well King can box. Man, it's like. It's almost like he doesn't have power sometimes because he lands so many at such a big man. It's the but he's Diaz got, factor, just a pop up, pop up, pop up, pop up. Exactly. He's not going zero to a hundred on every shot. He said, "I'm going to throw every shot at eighty percent. That way, I get five of them, and that's why he lands so many." Correct. Uh, co-main event. Whoa, this Cruz is, Garbrandt, this son. Is, did you see some of that trash talk? Um, Dude, I'm night? glad you brought it up, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> that How shit. about hey? Can you tell like this? Part of me was like. Oh, man, these guys really need help with the trash talk. But then part of me was like, this is so unfiltered. I'm kind of digging it. Because yeah. Cody Garbrandt, and I was talking to Lance Palmer and some of the alpha mm-hmm. uh, male boys in uh, Austin when I was doing this uh, invitational there with your boy, Eddie Bravo. Yeah, yeah. And Lance Palmer is like, dude, Cody Garbrandt's a pit bull. Yeah. He's like, he's so fucking competitive. Like, fight week, if he sees someone from another camp, he wants to fight him. So <laughs> when 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 he goes, you better hope I don't see you backstage, and Dominic's yeah. like, oh, whatever. Uh-huh. No, no, no. He's dead <laughs> he serious. serious. So I like it because it's real. Like yeah. There's That's so exactly. much animosity there. And and how about Dominic's like, dude, be professional. I'll let you talk. Let me talk. And Cody's like, right. fuck that. And then when, said, when he made the hate. remark about like buying his home yes. uh, from all the victories over his, his, yes. uh, his teammates... I thought that was that was pretty. That was yeah. He goes, "What are you talking about?" He goes, 
I beat everyone from your gym. I bought a house because I beat all your guys. Yeah, that I was, was kind of rolling. amazing, man. And then he goes, then when he goes, you look like Pee Wee Herman with that tie. I was like, oh my oh, god. Oh yeah, they were. They, 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 you could you could just see the the the, the, the discomfort. They, they hate each other, man. And but that's what that's what real fans they they pick up on that, man. They could smell a fake from a mile away. You know, 100%. these guys genuinely have dislike for one another. Correct. Um, they're not trying. Uh, on this one though, Dominic Cruz versus Cody Garbrandt, man. I'm gonna stay with the champ, dude. Just because, although I think Dominic Cruz is gonna be too hard to hit, Cody Garbrandt, he plants his feet because he has he has power, so he has to plant his feet, which would be harder to hit him a moving target like Dominic Cruz. But I think Cody Garbrandt probably is the most uh, athletic and explosive power hit puncher that that. Uh, Dominic Cruz is gone again. You know, fair. he's not a guy that like is stationary throwing a big punch. He's exploding forward, like you said, like a heat seeking missile. Man, he finds his targets, so he could catch the chin, man. But Dominic Cruz just has so much experience, and this is the other thing: his time as an analyst uh, on Fox or whatever he does. You know, he's always doing this stuff. He breaks down fights, and he sees stuff from another angle. You know, he he takes a step back and he breaks down fights and he analyzes what should I do, how would I beat myself, what would you do to beat me. And he looks at it, and he's gonna he's gonna implement that game plan because he's a smart fighter. You can tell he overanalyzes almost everything, and I think he's overanalyzed his fight so much that he's gonna create the perfect game plan and stick to it. I I prove me wrong. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, this is my only. Oh, thing. you can't pick. You can't pick. See? I won't pick yeah. right now, but I, I just to play devil's advocate here. Yeah. Um, I I like the fight for Cody Garbrandt. I think Dominic Cruz is the smartest fighter in the game. Mm-hmm. He's the most c- cerebral fighter, to your point. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, but he is working that UFC Tonight desk and the UFC fights all the time. To my point, what I was talking before, where it's guys, a distraction. it's a dis- it's a huge distraction. Man, yeah. And Dominic Cruz doesn't fight that much. Mm-hmm. Cody Garbrandt fights nonstop. Cody, my issue for him in this fight is that shit talking, it's so personal and he's so passionate and he, he's this little ball of hate and it comes out in both his left <laughs> and right ball hands, right? It comes it. out in his left and right hand and yeah. he's the Chuck Liddell of the division where if he touches, you're going to sleep. I'm talking prime Chuck Liddell. Mm-hmm. People forget too, Cody Garbrandt uh, was uh, undefeated as a high school wrestler, had offers to go Division One. I was like, fuck this noise. College isn't for me. I'm just going to go fight professionally and start boxing. So he has the wrestling pedigree too. I but, Dom, but Dominic Cruz, the, the, the edge in that. Better factor. wrestler. Better yes, wrestler. Better wrestler. Sure, yeah. But Dominic Cruz has no knockout power. He's not yeah. going to knock a guy like Cody Garbrandt out. Um, we I don't know too much about Cody's grappling as far as submission, jiu-jitsu, stuff mm-hmm. like that. So that's probably the edge of the I don't think it's Cruz. instinctual. Like, I think if he gets you on the ground, he just wants to smash you. Yes. He's not thinking, like, hug you. He, he, yeah. goes, he goes the Hulk smash kind yeah. of uh, mode. Uh, the, the huge X factor here is, can Dominic Cruz for 25 minutes avoid that right hand of Cody Garbrandt? Yeah. Because Dominic Cruz could land 50 shots. Cody needs one. Mm-hmm. In 25 minutes, he needs one small opportunity to take Dominic Cruz's head off. I don't know if he can avoid it. This is the other X factor. Can Cody Garbrandt compete with Dominic Cruz for 25 minutes? That's what was, that was what I was Cody Garbrandt's say. never gone past what the third round, right? He's probably been to the, the has he even been to a decision? If so, maybe once or so. Um, 25 minutes, man, and then well, but remember, it's not 25 minutes against a guy like. Um, Lineker or you know a guy who's marching forward and you know what to deal with. It's 25 fighter, minutes yeah. of Dominic Cruz. Yeah. Footwork. On the bike. Angles. Kicks. Getting frustrated. Wrestling. Yeah. Has he... So he's never been decision. Uh, oh, decision. Oh, one decision. Henry Briones. Three rounds. Three rounds. Oh, and then one But he, ha- he hasn't been out of the first round in... Uh, he hasn't been out of the first round this year. He's undefeated, and obviously he's undefeated. But, but. you learn a lot in the, in, the, in those five round. That's where you learn man. the most. I think I think you learn the most out of decisions, and you know you don't learn too much. Like his last fight against uh, uh, Mizugaki, mm-hmm. knocking him out in forty eight seconds. You learn nothing. It, lo- it looks <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah, you have no idea if you did the right diet, if you did the right training camp, if you made the right moves. It, you know, you have no idea. Did the hyperbolic chamber work? I don't fucking know. I knocked. <laughs> I threw one punch and knocked him out. I used to. I loved winning that fast to get out of there, but I was kind of yeah. like, Ugh. the thing that you learn in these in these five round fights, or even just going to decision three round fights, is kind of like you know in jujitsu they say there's like the hidden jujitsu. You can't really teach it, but yes. it's just knowing when to apply pressure and this and that. In MMA, and you probably. 
hopefully you kind of know what I'm talking about. Like I find in fights that like you learn that like how to the momentum. There's like the hidden MMA fighting is like there's a momentum thing where like even little subtle things like during my fight, Mike kicked me in the leg and I looked at him and I kind of nodded and he kicked me again and I nodded and then I came back and I punched him in his face. And it wasn't like I knocked him out or it wasn't like a big thing. But in his heart, he's like, shit, it's this guy just thing. punked me out twice and then he punched me in my face. Now the momentum's in my favor. And that subtle thing is little things that you learn from going three rounds, but, taking but, momentum from people. And, and to your point, momentum's everything. Because in your fight against Mike Perry, he came out with, he's undefeated. He's knocked everyone out. He's, he thinks he's invisible. He's like, dude, I mm-hmm. can't be touched. Yeah. He comes out and right off the bat, you douche. And he goes, <laughs> You can see on his face, he goes, oh, <laughs> yeah, that one's the to happen. fuck? Oh, this is fighting. That's Alan Joban. Yeah. You're in a fight now. And you can tell the momentum from the very get-go was not on his side. Because mm-hmm. it was that momentum shift right and he's away. he's a, heavy, a heavily uh, momentum fighter. He's which is huge. He's everybody. Which yeah. is, and now, and then this leads me right into the main event, mm-hmm. Ronda Rousey. Insanely momentum fighter. Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. she comes out. And it's this fucking tidal wave. From the get-go, and yeah. boy, if you don't fucking deal with it, you need to eat the fuck up. But if you do deal with it... And, but If you're a so, tough girl like So is Amanda Nunes, though. Yeah, exactly. Remember, Amanda Nunes, whenever it goes usually past the second round, she starts to, t- to really, really get exhausted. Her technique goes out the window. I, you look at her losses, if you can click on her chin, you look, she lost to Cat Zingano. Lost, remember? Got out-grappled. Yes. Got kind of beat up. And she's uh, black belt on the ground. Yeah. That, that You know, a lot of people say when you look at Nunez, she's tough as hell. Um, she hits pretty hard, and she's a black belt on the ground, and those are kind of her main assets. And um, she is definitely probably the the best girl in the division aside from Ronda Rousey in my eyes, only because I say this every time, but it's just the only thing I can go by is when Ronda was the champion, everybody said, you know what, the division's weak and this and that. She doesn't have any real competition. And then and Ronda was dominating, and then Ronda Rousey goes away, and all of a sudden, the belt's changing hands, and the division's so competitive. And it just showed how dominant Ronda Rousey really was. And I think she's going to come back. And it was just a bad matchup, too. Her against Holly Holm. You're going against Holly. She was going against MMA strikers. They were good strikers, but they were MMA strikers. It's a little bit more predictable. Like, mm-hmm. you know it's coming. It's going to be a 1-2 or a 2-3 type stuff, for an example. But against Holly Holm... She's got 50-plus boxing and kickboxing fights. She knows world the class. subtle things. that World-class strikers. So you put her against Holly uh, against Ronda Rousey, all of a sudden, Ronda Rousey looked just like it was basic striking. She and she made her look amateur in her striking. And all these funny memes that are popping up about how she throws punches. But people forgot the fact how dominant she was and how much of a true killer she really is when she's in there just because she had the wrong matchup at the wrong time. But I got to go with Ronda Rousey, man. I mean, Nunes could prove me wrong. But um, Ronda Rousey just was so dominant, bro. I can't go against her when she's coming back. Uh, in it, uh, it's there's there's X, X factors in in these three main fights for Ronda. It's does she want it? Yeah, where's the head? She's, at? she's exactly, been yeah. shooting movies like a motherfucker. She's had mm. this long layoff. It's alarming to me when a champ who's you know supposedly the best woman's fighter of all time takes this long of a layoff. Mm-hmm. Because a guy like the Diaz brothers, a guy like Anderson Silva, a guy like yourself, a guy like uh, Conor McGregor, as soon as Conor lost, he wanted right back. I want to fight him right now. We didn't hear that from Ronda. Yeah. So to me, and with her management being WME for years and they need a star, how bad does she want it? Now, if Ronda wants to be in there and she feels like her back's against the wall, and she feels like everyone's counter out. And she can have those chips on her shoulder, which makes Ronda Ronda. She's gonna murk Amanda <laughs> Nunes. Yeah. She really, she will outclass her. If you think uh, Amanda Nunes is a black belt on the ground, Ronda will fucking roll her up like an egg roll. She will destroy her on the ground. It's uh, not even close. She <laughs> like will roll her up like like a fucking <laughs> hand <laughs> roll, like a <laughs> fucking <laughs> spicy tuna California she will, roll. Man, she's gonna. It's not even close on the ground, and she's gonna take the arm home with her. It, that's, it, it, that's a big that, but <clears throat> brother, that's a big if. Now, yeah. if Ron is in there, and this is what this is what there's there's signs there's signs because. She does that. That remember at uh, UFC Madison Square Garden, Conor McGregor uh, versus Eddie Alvarez. They bring her out. And she doesn't mm-hmm. get that many chairs. She got yeah. a lot of booze. She had to be consoled in the back. Oh really? Yeah. She had, Afterward in the in back, the back she they're like, "Don't worry, it. it's okay." And Dana goes, "She she has a perfect. He's an enabler. She mm-hmm. had a perfect good reason why she didn't do that interview. Uh, mm-hmm. I told her not to. She had to do a thing. 
Uh, so it, to me, where's her psyche at? Because mm-hmm. what made Rhonda so great, granted she had all the judo background and she has this tenacity, even though she has a terrible training camp, let's be real. Mm-hmm. But what makes her great <laughs> is she has this she just has this tenacity that no girl could match. She's the top dog, yeah. If you fuck with if she doesn't have that, Amanda Nunes is gonna knock her lights out, man. You said it, man. It's we a just huge spoke X about factor. momentum, and you said it. You could see when she in it, when when Ronda Rousey got her momentum going, and she was killing all these girls. Mike Tyson effect, son. She had it, and then when she, and all of a sudden Ronda Ron, Ronda Rousey became like the zinger, like the one liner. She kept coming up with all these do nothing bitch things because she was so confident. She's like, whatever I say is fucking golden. <laughs> She and said, then he, do, do nothing, bitch, then he got to <laughs> kicked in the face. She's like, I, I want to do be a do nothing, bitch. I want kids. I just want to chill. Like, it, that, she knocked that do nothing, bitch, out of her. She's like, oh, my God, I just want right. kids, and I, I, need to, I need a house and shit. I'm not trying to fight <laughs> I anymore. I just need a man to take care of me. Like, God damn. <laughs> God, dog. Oh what happened God. to the badass? Yeah, so, so, so we'll, that's we'll the X factor, my w- man. Which, which one shows up? If the old Ronda shows up, and I'm not saying she has to be like the most confident girl in the world, but if she's performing at the level that she was, I think that Ronda takes out Nunez. If, if it's uh, a Ronda who's unsure of herself, man, we might have a good fight on our hands. Exactly. You have a good fight on your hands, yeah. and uh, with Amanda's uh, striking power, knockout power, that's a, a tough matchup. But and uh, put one because I said tough again. But um, <laughs> as far as uh, fighting style, Amanda coming forward is perfect for Ronda. The, this this whole fight is not a skill thing. It's mm-hmm. a, it, who who's who's mentally more prepared to deal, as you said, with the momentum shift mm-hmm. uh, coming off a loss for Ronda, uh, ring rust, this magnitude of a fight. Ronda won't even talk to the media, which I'll get into next week. She won't even talk to the media. She only did a commercial with, uh, or only did an interview with Ellen, who you know, we might as well have Skip Bayless talking about the UFC. Like Ellen, freaking, <laughs> you know, Ellen blowing smoke up her ass because she doesn't know fighting. She's yeah, everything's yeah. all good, and you know she's talking about suicide on there and crying, mm-hmm. and you know Ellen's there to comfort. But you release the hounds on someone who knows fighting, they're gonna grill you on what's going on, stuff like that, and she won't even come face to face with that. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother issue. Yeah. That's a whole nother mental psyche type of thing that gives me a little bit of red flags. But I'll make my picks next week. But it's pretty obvious. I'll be, I'll be, yeah. I'm curious to hear them all, though, man. 